Hello everybody. I'm Terry. I'm 54 years old and I am attempting to put together my Jeep hardtop lift from uh, Top Lift Pros. I uh, started off by carefully using a um, dolly, which I have over there. See the dolly? And with the dolly, I carried each one of these uh, large boxes. There's one box and two box. And within those two boxes are a number of pieces, some of which I have separated over there. And the rest of the smaller pieces, the attachments and whatnot are right here. I uh, read the instructions before I started and I have a makeshift table that I have with a couple of uh, saw horses so that I can not, so I don't have to bend to the floor, the ground to put these uh, pieces together. First, I wanted to make sure that I had all my pieces and I did, so I checked everything off. So here are the wheels and casters and such in this box and then all the caps and uh, metal attachments are right there. In addition to that, we have all of our joists that uh, connect the green pieces together over here. And I haven't taken all the foam off yet, but some of these, like these, those right there. Um, and those adjustments are still right here, but I wanted to get a good start. Uh, plan on doing this, probably going to take me better part of, let's see, it's 20 till 12 now. I assume I'll be done in about two hours. So that's my best guess uh, as I keep going. And I'm going to stop and put some things together and then go ahead and talk about it as I go. For anyone who's a, a novice like myself and would like to have some help with putting a large apparatus together, uh, I'll be glad to help you. Talk okay. to you soon. Had to go to the... Uh, hardware store and get some hex headed sockets. So what I did is I laid out my 17 millimeter, 13 millimeter uh, wrenches, which are right there. And then I also got my eight, six and five, which are actually it's my five, six and eight. Uh, uh, hex drive sockets and then start number one are these kind of looks like a T sort of uh, pipes and then these couplers right here there are six of those one two three four five and six I like to lay them out nice and even so that I know that I have what I have and then the next step you're gonna see is uh, one at a time I'm going to attach each of these uh, okay. couplers. So I went ahead and put the couplers on and um, I didn't print this but I didn't take a video of this but I accidentally put one on this section right here instead of the straight one right here and the straight one right there straight one right here and the straight one right here so I caught myself and I turned up the straight ones like this I turned it up facing me and then the ones that are curved I put that straight down like that so you could see that it kind of goes with the curve right there uh, just to help me keep oriented. So there I am, still got my sockets ready, still got my wrenches ready, and off to the next one. So I went ahead and attached another piece to my two curved pieces. I'm calling these the curved pieces right here. This is the curved piece right here. Okay. And I just added this one that has these brackets on it. I just added one of these to each side. And you'll see that I have one on this side as well. Kind of matchy-matchy. So they meet up. Like one's the husband and one's the wife. So you can kind of see how they go together. So this one had a coupler. The rounded one. Remember the curved one? It had a coupler that that the pole went into the top half, kind of like plumbing. And then this one slides along this last, this bracket right here. So if I back up and give you a full view, you can see that now those two pieces are attached. This one with the bracket on it on the bottom and the one that I began with, with the curved and the little leg. 
Now that one is attached. So I got this mirroring each other. So if you see one on this side, it's the same as if I go over here and go to this side. You can see that. So I used the drawing, a little drawing that they gave me in the book. So I'm trying to, they showed the two things right here with the uh, curved pieces that I showed you. And then they showed you putting the couplers on. And then there's like a little alignment dot, which is right here, I believe. There's an alignment dot. See right there? That's the alignment dot right there. That tells us where to have these screws up. So we wanna make sure that they're on the up. It's actually the black side that screws in. So you wanna have that on the up side when you're um, attaching, when you're putting this together. So this screw right here goes down and aligns with this dot right here. And you look down on it like that. Okay, time for the next. Spot. Made my first fupa. So apparently, this right here is supposed to. I'm gonna try and look this up. Supposed to be on here like this. Well, I'm dropping it. Don't know where it is. Let me see here. So apparently, this is supposed to be on here like this like this and then this this right there is supposed to be on this pole right here so i had to undo my aluminum pole thing and i'm going to go ahead and fix that now this is what it should have looked like i should have done that so i should have put this on this this is actually has the rounded here and then the double ended side here i neglected to put this on this before i put the pole in so i'm getting ready to finish that part. so this is what it should look like i'm going to give you a little bit of a roundabout view here so i started off with just these these poles right here and i had to add these couplers and of course i put them on all jacked up so there's a coupler that's on this this right here this is all one piece right here that i'm touching one piece right there so one piece right there and then this is another piece right here this is another piece that I have. And you'll know that these brackets are facing the table. And of course, I have them on both sides. Brackets are facing the table, so everything's mirrored to each other. And then I have um, the pole, the little center pole that goes in here, the little aluminum thing. And then I have these attaching that in the middle. So... Nothing has been tightened down yet. Just in the event I have to retake this apart again, I'm ready. So we are now at step um, I think I'm at step nine. And getting ready to start step ten. I will um, go ahead and uh, go on to putting my casters on, which are the wheels. Apparently the brakes or the wheels on this, this is actually the front of it right here. So this will be the front. The open end is the front end. So the brakes go in front. So that must be the front since this doesn't have anything right here. So I assume that's the front of this apparatus. Okay, the instructions said that the brakes go on in front and these are the casters or wheels that go on the front because this here is the brake. This is the brake and this is how I know it's the brake because this caster has no brake. There's nothing to stop this thing from rolling all over the place. So we're not gonna use that one. And uh, we're going to put the brakes on the front, which I would assume can all go on here like this. Probably that way, because that way you can actually put the brake on. Probably, oops, sorry. So this is probably how it goes on, because you have to be able to put your foot on there to, to stop it. Alrighty, looks like I'm going to be putting the wheels on now. Um, I now moved it off of the table 
and this is how it stands while I'm getting ready to put on the wheels. Getting ready to put the wheels on right here. And it says eight by 15 millimeter, but the package says eight by 16 millimeter. So hopefully that isn't a big, big deal. But we'll see, I'll show you when I get done. Uh, looks like the actual bolt portion of it uh, went through like the bottom. So the wheel side. So it went in through this side and the nut goes on this side. Just a little tip there. I'm gonna go ahead and do this other side now. See you in a little bit. Number two, attached. So now I have all the wheels on. These are the front wheels in the front. They have the brakes on them. This is the back end of the lift. It is upright and ready to be attached to. So we'll go to the next. The black poles here go inside of the upper part here and it says two holes down three holes are up so i guess that means that the two holes go in right so the two holes go in but i assume it goes in that way three holes go up and then it says locking pins but here it says d-ring pins so i assume that these are the locking pins they're referring to. Okay. So I went ahead and inserted, and this is hard to see with the lawnmower there. I went ahead and inserted the, um, the black tubular unit that had the two down and the three up. And because I have a stock Jeep, I don't need to put a D ring. A, this is a D ring right here. I don't need to put a D ring on the top because I have a stock Jeep, so I don't need to go any higher than that. So um, if you have a lifted Jeep or whatever, you would use the D ring to raise up this unit so you could get the back top off. Okay, I'm getting ready to put the gear on, which goes right here, right here, and here's the gear. So the gear is right here. So, and the gear goes on like this like right here, I'm sorry, like this, like that. And then I am going to get ready to do the next step. The tail end of our uh, assembly. I have just a few pieces left that need to be put together. I've got those things right there. I believe that they're part of the lift system that goes inside the um, Jeep. And they're attached to that thing right there. And then of course, this is the bar that you crank this big crank bar right there, this right there. This is the cranking bar. Um, of course, I still have lots of hardware to put together. I am going to look at the directions to see why it tells me that I need a 10 by 55 millimeter bolt and I only have a 10 by 60 millimeter bolt. They seem to be off a little bit on their measurements. Not a big deal, but I like to make sure that I have the right items when I'm putting things together. And apparently this has some little skewy things. Better have it too long than too short though. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this gear shaft thing on and I'll be back. I did several steps. Uh, actually, I don't even remember where I left off, but I, um, I think I had the top portion right here. I think I had it put on. And the next thing I did was put this uh, put this this piece on right here, this piece right here. I put that on, and I had the gear. I remember putting the gear on. So the gear was tricky. So the the gear part has a spring, and it has to be put on this piece right here, which was not attached yet. Uh, so I had the spring right here hooked onto here and onto this bolt that was already attached, this lever here. So what I did is, is I, um, I hooked those two together and then with this bolt right here, I helped align it together. I wish you could have seen it. <laughs> I, there's no way I could have held the camera. Whoa. There's no way I could have held the camera and did this justice. Uh, definitely would have been helpful to have a two person do this part. 
uh, I believe um, under the circumstances, um, I handled it pretty well. So um, some of the pieces were uh, connected afterwards. So uh, this was attached very easily, just had a little um, nut and bolt here, nut and bolt on the other side, kind of just fell to the, to the side because it wasn't attached yet. Uh, went ahead and um, once I got the spring hooked to here and to this black thing, it was hanging. This was like loose hanging. And then I went ahead and stretched it, stretched it and put the bolt through this green part and then um, put, the, put the nut on the other side just to hold it in place. And the cool part about that part is, is um, I don't have it attached to the hand grip yet, but I can actually um, move it out of the way using this, pushing this out of the way. So once this gets attached, which is further along in the instructions, it'll be able to move this gear that'll help lift the uh, the top part of the <coughs> of the lift. <laughs> I think I've said lift a few times. Uh, and I've said uh, a few times, but however, it's all cool. Uh, then there are, um, once that got done, then I went ahead and attached, there's two different green poles. There's this top green pole, which only has one hole on each end. So there's a hole on this end and there's a hole on this end. Same with this one. Very easy to attach, same as everything else. They have these clear washers that go in between anytime two poles are next to each other. You put a, a nylon washer in between. You can probably barely see the nylon washer right there. Uh, and that just helps it from, I think, the green paint rubbing and from going up and down and whatnot. Uh, and then the same with down here, I've got a green, I've got a little washer in between those two as well. And after this is all done, I'll have little black caps that'll cover those. Okay, so just for the, don't wanna lose my hardware, I went ahead and just put this on here so I didn't lose it because I know I need it for a future. <laughs> Pardon me. And then uh, my next step is getting ready to put that bad, bad, that bad boy on. That's the thing that actually lifts the top of the Jeep off of the Jeep. So I will um, continue here shortly. and semi-attached uh, this pole to the top pole. Uh, just so that I could have it so it wasn't hanging before. It was just kind of flopping down here. I had to get it out of the way. And our next step is to put these in. Kind of like we did with the, the frame part. It's going to slide down here. And um, that's going to actually lift the... Uh, that thing over there. <laughs> it's going to lift it up. And then we're going to adjust it up and down as needed, depending on what we want to do. So those are next. And we'll get back with you. Put those aluminum um, inserts on there that are going to help lift the top. Getting ready to do that Put now. Put that top thing on. Went on real easy. I noticed that the round portion of this goes with the round portion of the bar. That's why I knew not to turn it the other direction. And this tube is open and this tube is open. So I thought that would make sense knowing which way things are supposed to orient. <clears throat> Sounds like we're getting close. Okay, I finished putting this thing together. And uh, I think the last thing I didn't show you, but this right here, this, if you pull it out, allows you to advance these arms, which this is what lifts. This is what lifts the uh, roof of the, uh, <clears throat> of the Jeep. So that's my project. It is finished. And I do still need to put the caps on though. I need to still put these little caps on, but I am done. Took me about three hours and that's including going to the hardware store and um, getting the pieces that I need. I took several breaks, but I would think that if you're patient with yourself, you'll do just fine. It wasn't terribly difficult, uh, wasn't too heavy. All the things I predicted it would be, it wasn't. 
you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Hello, it's me again. Here's the Jeep and the lift. So the cool thing about this is, is you can drive up right underneath this thing. And so it, like the storage is minimal. So like you can see underneath here, it's like it just drives up right underneath there. I've neglected to tell you that on my original um, video, I had this black thing on the outside here of this. It was supposed to slip up underneath and through this hole up and through here. And then there's a slotted hole through this black piece that it goes through there. So I didn't have it put together correctly the first time, but it works wonderful now. And uh, it took me a little while to get this piece right here worked on. Riley, this piece right here, I had to adjust it several times using an Allen wrench, these two little holes right here. These Allen wrench for that. And uh, you squeeze that handle right there. It opens up and allows you to go up and down with, uh, with the lift. So if you have any questions, I'll be here to answer your questions. Thanks.